Hi, today we're going to learn how to make the jasmine stitch. The jasmine stitch is used on this peony pocket pouch and you can see that it was done with different colors so the stitch really pops out but the technique for the stitch is the same whether you're making a bag or a dress or a sweater and so that's what we're going to learn how to do today is the jasmine stitch. For this tutorial, we're gonna use Comfy, and often when we do tutorials, we use a heavier weight yarn, but we found with this stitch, it's so puffy that it works best in lighter weight yarns, and so we're gonna use um, the worsted weight that was actually used to make the bag. We're gonna use Comfy, and it's just a nice um, plied yarn. I don't recommend super fuzzy yarns for this technique because the technique is puffy. And um, if you use a super fuzzy yarn, you will lose a lot of the definition and you don't wanna add a lot of bulk to an already puffy stitch. Every jasmine stitch is gonna start with a um, foundation puff stitch. And for this project, we're just gonna chain one. We're gonna elongate the loop. You should do your best to make the loop the same length every time. It is a somewhat forgiving stitch, so if it's not the same length every time, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but do try to make it about the same length. So we've elongated the loop, we're gonna yarn over, and then we are going to work back into our chain stitch, and then we're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop, and we're gonna make it the same length as the first elongated loop. So now we've got three loops on the hook. We're gonna repeat that, yarn over, go back into the loop, pull up an elongated loop again. So now we have five loops on the hook. Um, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all five loops, but you're gonna hang on to the working yarn while you do that. So we've captured our working yarn, we've pulled through, now you're gonna go back through that loop that you held onto of your working yarn, yarn over and pull up a loop so that there's two loops on the hook, and then yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And then I like to snug it down pretty tight um, so that the loop doesn't stretch. Another option would be to actually put a chain stitch at the top to secure it. If you do decide to do a chain stitch, it's not gonna add a lot of length to your stitch, so it's really not gonna substantially change the project. It just makes it a little bit more secure, and ultimately it's how what you think the final fabric should look like. If you feel like it's not tight enough with just the one yarn over, then go ahead and put a chain stitch at the top. So we're gonna make another foundation um, puff stitch. So we're going to elongate the loop again, and now we're gonna work into that stitch that we made at the top of the previous puff. So elongate the loop, yarn over, work into that stitch that's at the top. Yarn over and pull up a loop. It's also gonna be elongated, yarn over again, yarn over, or yarn over, go back in and pull up one more loop. So we have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, draw through all five loops, but make sure that you hang on to that working yarn. And then go back into the working yarn, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And then I like to tighten that down just to secure it. So you can see where we're working into that. This loop can become large. If you chain, it sort of locks this down so that it doesn't grow quite as much if you're concerned. Okay, so now that we know how to make our foundation puff stitch, I've gone ahead and made 12. You will find when you um, try this technique, you need several puff stitches to start with. It's hard to see how the flower petals play out until you've got several puff stitches to begin with. So I've got 12 here, and, um, and we're gonna make one more um, foundation puff stitch before we start turning back and making our actual jasmine stitches. It's the beginning of the jasmine stitch, but it's worked like the foundation puff. So we're gonna elongate the loop, we're gonna yarn over, and then we're gonna go into the top of that stitch, just like we do for the foundation. Um, yarn over and pull up a loop, so I've got three loops on the hook. Yarn over, go back in, pull up again, and now we've got five loops on the hook. So if this was the foundation stitch, we would be yarning, yarning over and pulling through. But we're gonna do the jasmine stitch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn and we're gonna work down at the base of this puff stitch. So yarn over, go into that 
base and pull up a loop. It's easier to pull up the elongated loops when you're working further along the row because as you're working in, it just naturally becomes an elongated stitch. So I've got two on the hook. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull up another loop. So now I've got four on the hook, yarn over and pull up another loop. So now I've got six on the hook plus my first five. So I've got 11 loops on the hook. Then we're going to go into the next stitch down. So I'm gonna yarn over, go into the next stitch down, pull up a loop, yarn over, go in there, pull up a loop. So that's four loops that I've pulled up. And then one more time for six loops that I've pulled up in this next stitch. So all total, I have 17 loops on my hook. It's a lot of loops. So now you're gonna yarn over and pull through all 17 loops but you're gonna make sure that you hang on to your working yarn. I find it easiest to put my in or to put my middle finger in there to just kind of hang on to it. And then I always twist my hook down so that it's sort of sliding through. So there's my loop. I'm gonna go back into the loop that I held on to at the beginning of my working yarn. And I'm gonna pull up a loop so that now I have two loops on my hook. And at this point, you can sort of um, cinch things down to make them a little tighter. Then yarn over and pull through those two loops on the hook and tighten that up and that's going to secure those three petals into um, one stitch. And then we're going to do our next group of jasmine petals. We're going to start the same way. We're going to elongate the loop, yarn over, go into the top of that stitch that we just created and pull up a loop. Repeat that and pull up another loop with a yarn over first for five loops on the hook. Then we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna go into the um, base of the last petal made. So right here, and you can see I've got a petal coming out. So I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull up a loop. So that's two loops, repeat that. And I've got four and then once more, I've got six loops. So I have 11 loops total. And then I'm gonna go down to the end of this stitch and I'm gonna repeat that one more time and put another six loops on the hook. So yarn over and pull up one, yarn over and pull up two, yarn over and pull up three times, which is six loops, 17 loops total. Yarn over, hanging on to that working yarn and pull through all 17 loops. Then go back into that loop that you held on to and yarn over and pull up a loop. So you've got two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through those two last loops. And then this just secures that next group of petals and then repeat that process one more time. Elongate the loop, yarn over, go into the um, top of the last stitch or group of petals made, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull up another loop. So five loops on the hook, go into the base of the last petal made and pull up three times with a yarn over in between. So it'll be six more loops. And then we're gonna go to the next stitch and repeat that. And we're gonna add six more loops. So yarn over and pull up three times. So 17 loops on the hook, yarn over, hanging on to that working yarn, pull through all the loops, go back through the loop that you held on to, and pull up another loop. So two loops on the hook and yarn over and pull through both of those loops to secure the top of that petal. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row. Okay, so let's do the last two. Now that I've done most of the row, we'll do the last two. So we're still working that same way. We're gonna elongate that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. So five loops, go down to the base of the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You're gonna do that three times to add six loops. And then you're gonna go to the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and do that three times to add six more. So 17 total. Hang on to your working yarn, pull it through, go back into that held on yarn, that working yarn, pull up another loop, pull through two. And then here's our last loop. So we've got five loops, 
and then base of the stitch, add six more loops, and then the very end, we're gonna pull up three times, adding six more loops, and then yarn over, pull through everything, go back into that held yarn, yarn over and pull up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two. So now that I've completed this first row, you can sort of see the beginning of the petals. And so when you go to work the next row, you're always gonna start with that foundation puff stitch. And so you're gonna turn your work, you're gonna pull up an elongated loop, you're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull up, you're gonna yarn over and pull up twice so that you've got five. You're gonna yarn over and pull through all of those. And then uh, holding the working yarn, you're gonna go back into that and pull up a loop and then pull through two. So that creates your first puff on the end and then you're gonna begin your jasmine stitch by yarning over and pulling up a loop in the top of that foundation. So now I've got five loops. Then you're gonna go into the base of that stitch, yarn over and pull up three stitches, adding six stitches because of the yarn overs. And then you're gonna go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up three times, adding six more stitches, 17 loops on the hook, yarn over, make sure you hang on to your working yarn, pull through all 17, go back into that working yarn, yarn over and pull up a loop, so two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both of those loops, and then you can cinch that down to secure that stitch. And then um, you just keep repeating that process, making a ton of loops as you work your way across the row making little petals and then when you're done you have what looks like flowers um the stitch is fiddly and i highly recommend hanging on to the yarn as much as you possibly can so that you don't lose it um, but it's also a really forgiving stitch okay so now that i've put this down you can see um, when you work across the next row You'll just, come, you'll just continue to make um, jasmine stitches, starting with that foundation puff stitch, and it just creates these lovely little flowers. You can see I've got a full flower here and then only partial flowers across the row. But if I were to continue to make it, I would end up with all of these lovely peonies. That's what we're calling them in the peony bag, but you can see all these little jasmine stitches. And because these were made with a contrasting color, they really pop out. But that's all that there is to making that jasmine stitch. It's just a bunch of loops. You just connect it. You just have to make sure that you're always hanging on to the yarn, that you're not gonna lose your loops. And make sure that when you're securing it, it's nice and tight, because that helps secure the stitches to keep the petals nice and tight as well. So that's it for the jasmine stitch. Until next time, happy stitching.